Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. So today, we'll be talking about complex numbers in C++. All right, so one of the things we're going to notice right out of the bat is that C++ complex numbers are going to look pretty much, the usage is going to look pretty much like C, not exactly, but sort of like C. And that's not by coincidence, it's because some of the work done in complex numbers for C++ was sort of backported into C. But we're going to also see some very annoying thing with C++, just like we saw with C. So let's jump in. So one of the things that we're going to see is just like C, in C++, we're going to be using header files. Remember, in C++, the header files are a little bit different. They're pre-compiled header files. They're not quite like import and packages or anything like that. But they're somewhat a little bit better and they allow for faster compilation than just straight header files in C. So you drop the .h to show that you're using a pre-compiled header. And then, of course, um, the implementation is going to be provided by in some library while the prototype, just sort of the declaration of the functions or whatever the types are going to be in, the, in this pre-compiled header file. But these are the definitions. And the first one is that class that define complex. Now, we haven't talked about classes in C++ and certainly not template classes or templates, period. Um, but there's a class called a templatize and it's called complex. And there is some specialization of that template and specialization for when you're using float or double or long double. And I'm going to leave it at that and just keep in mind that a class that has a specialization is so that all to take advantage of any sort of differences in that particular type might be past the class that um, changes the implementation to take advantage of that type. Okay. So one way to think of it is if I wanted to store a uh, vector of bits, it might be more efficient for me to have my vector class be specialized for bits versus just any old type because I know that though, um, the way I can store a bunch of bits is just by packing them into an int, for example. A thousand bit vector, um, if I use int, is way wasteful than if I were to specialize that and hide the fact that though, I could pack those multiple bits into some bytes. All right, enough about that. We'll have time to talk about it later. Um, being C++, it had to be weird. And so here are the um, constructors for our complex class. And I'm not going to explain all of it. When we look at some C++ classes, we will talk a little bit about them. But again, we're not going to spend too much time on it in this course. When we do a C++ course, we will. Now, um, that's all nice and dandy. And we see some methods for doing um, operations. Again, C++ allows you to create your own um, override certain operators, like plus, minus, and so on. And the complex class does the exact same thing. It provides its own implementation of what it means to add two complex numbers. And we're not going to talk about details about non-member function versus member function, or while you might want to do some non-member function. But so we have a type for representing complex number. It's a class. It specializes on double floats and long double. And then we have some method and some um, functions for real, imaginary power, absolute value, and so on. So let's go ahead and try using these things that we get in C++. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to modify our code to be C++. So we're going to copy the existing example we have from C. We're going to remove the files we don't want. And then, of course, we have to rename or main that C to C++. And then, of course, we have to change or include that H files to get the corresponding C++ one. So instead of stdio.h, we can get iostream.h, include complex precompiler header. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to, instead of using the C macro, you know, C real, C image, imaginary to get the imaginary number, we're going to instead use real function and IM, IMG function from C++. And so those are going to allow us to pass in a complex object, because remember, complex is a class in C++. A complex object, when we create an instance, we get an object, complex object, and it's going to, it's a method to get to the real and imaginary par parts for that complex object. All right. Um, the other thing we need to do is since we're using a complex class that's templatized, we need to pass the template, and this is how you do that. People who do Java and Scala, that sort of thing, would recognize this. But the other thing we need to do is fix the error that we have there on line 9, line 13, and line 18. And that is, instead of using the insertion operator to insert something into C out, we use the extraction operator. So that needs to be insertion operator instead of extraction operator. And then we can try again and compile and see what happens. All right, so the other thing we can do now that we see this is working is, but the, the formatting is a little ugly, so we can go fix that by removing the percent %f and so on, because we don't really need that. That is a leftover from our sprintf function. And so once we remove that, um, we, we run our code. We'll see it how 
it looks much better. One of the other things we can do is because we're using um, in an object and C++ allow you to override operators, one of the things it does have for the complex class is the extract operator to write to a string, so write a complex number to a string. So we can take advantage of that by um, just simply saying we want to send to the output a complex number. Remember, we couldn't do this in C. And so this is how C++ said you could print out, it's going to print out a complex number. Parentheses, you know, the number with comma separated. I don't like how it prints it out there, but that's how they decide to print it out. All right. The other thing we can do is we can try to create a, not a complex number, and we're going to use auto to see if C++ really understand what a complex number is. Remember, 3 plus 6 plus 2.5i is a complex number. So if C++ really understand what a complex number representation is, then it should be able to create a complex object and potentially put it in this um, thing for me. Um, but when we run it, we see it all. Instead, what we get C is equals to the number 1, which is not exactly what I would expect. Um, it seems like if it's doing some sort of operation and coming up with 1, which is really bizarre. Um, I also see it all. It's complaining about the fact that I use auto and saying that it's from the C++11 um, standards. And so I try to specify the, the option that I say I need to use to enable it, and it still is not working. So I'm going to go to the command line, and I tried it in the Visual Studio Code. It didn't work. I'm going to do it from the command line. It still doesn't work. So the other thing I'm going to do is use another option that I think should work, which is dash std equals the GNU plus plus 11. And that seems to compile and work now. But the result is wrong. A is 5 plus 3i, yet when I print out my complex number, it's just saying 5 and 0i, essentially. And so <clears throat> I don't know why it's doing this. Now, if I try to use C++14, now it gets a different set of errors. And it's basically telling me, well, I see the 3i is complex, but you're adding that to an integer, and I don't understand what you're trying to do. So even that doesn't work when I try to do um, C++14. So I'm going to go back to C++11. And instead of using auto, I'm going to say that our C is a complex um, double, parameterized by double, or templatized by double. And then I'm going to try and use parentheses around it and see if that works. And that still doesn't work. So now I'm going to actually use the C++ constructor for complex, which is look like a function call in other language. But basically, I'm going to pass the real and imaginary part as two numbers separated by comma. And now this works. So I got valid complex numbers now. And when I use them, I get the correct answer this time. So C++ is still not there, in my opinion, in terms of using... Um, complex numbers and how you can specify them. Well, maybe C++ is there, but my compiler on Mac is not there, is what I really should say. So in my opinion, this is still feels a little bit too hard to get things going. Um, it doesn't seem, it seems like we're still back in a day of using C really to construct a complex numbers. And even C was a little bit easier than this. So I decided to go take a look at an example online to see if I'm making a mistake. And sure enough, um, what I'm doing is correct. And so I try copying part of this example and using it, and it still did not produce the same output that I should get. I should really be getting 5.0 comma 01 as my output, but instead I'm not getting that. So I'm getting 1.0. So that tells me though the numbers are not initialized properly, which we saw from before. So it's, there's something wrong. Either my implementation is wrong or something. It has to be because if this is saying that oh, this is the standard way of doing it, why it's not working. So I decided to go try this in Linux instead. So I jump over to my trusty Linux box and I run it there. And guess what? It works. And so now I can modify things a little bit and try it again. And it works like the way it's supposed to be. I don't have to use it with by calling the constructor explicitly. I can sort of just say, Num real part plus imaginary part gets assigned to a complex number and it works just like it worked in C. And so it seems that at all it's not C plus as a problem, but rather it's the compiler on my Mac. So if I go back to my Mac and I look at the compiler I'm using, I see that all, um, let me just say I try G plus plus and I'm going to try C clang plus plus and the result is exactly the same. So for whatever reason, the C plus plus compiler on the Mac you shouldn't trust it. So if you're using C++ compiler on a Mac and you're seeing weird results like me, then, you know, try and use another compiler, try to use Linux or something like that. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I upgraded my Mac, updated it the other day, so I'm not sure, and I was seeing this problem even before. So uh, this is very, very, very weird. All right, 
So not too exciting. I'm personally not thrilled. I mean, my, I love C++ as a language a lot more before. And I'll start sharing some links with you guys and articles that shows that how C++, and these are people from who are well known in the C++ community. They're having complaints about C++ getting, getting too big and too complicated. And that's one of the reasons why I would not go program in C++ today is because I think the language is getting more and more complicated. Instead of the standard making things simpler, they're making them more difficult. And I don't see the point with computers as powerful as they are today, they should be able to inform more and take care of more things for us, you the programmer, and so things shouldn't be this complex. And that's the other reason that I hate Scholar also. It's unnecessarily complex to me. Um, I know not everything has to be easy, but make it as easy as it needs to be and no easier. But C++ seems to go the other way and make it way too complicated. And again, I'll show you some link and videos that you can go look at and see people like Scott Myers, um, who is well known in the C++ community, um, having the same complicated um, complaints and I'm making that C++ is just unnecessarily complicated language. Um, and he's not the only one. Um, all right, thanks for your time. Follow me on Twitter, um, Straversity1, Instagram, Straversity, and see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.